I'm naming it. This is the best back inside ever. I have probably forgotten more awkward moments than I can remember. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> I've been training for this day for my entire life. Welcome back, guys. We're in the kitchen again. That's a scary thought. <laughs> It's a little scary. So we had a little mix up with what day we had to leave. Again. <laughs> What's mine is yours. My problems are your problems. Your mess ups are. <laughs> I'll just drink my coffee in silence. <laughs> I even lied blatantly to people and told them which day we were leaving. So we had to scramble a little bit yesterday, but all is well. We're headed to Tupelo, Mississippi. We're going to see some great friends that we've met and we're excited to see them. But it made us think of a joke among us about cat head biscuits. Fond memories that we all had. And I don't even remember the conversation. I just remember we had a ball with it. I think half the people at the Grand Design Rally found out what cat head biscuits are from the <laughs> South. So we decided to make a breakfast this morning. We have time. It's a two hour run. We can't check in until two and normally we like to get out of here by 30 or nine o'clock. So rather than sit on the couch watching the same old reruns, we figured let's make a big breakfast, take on some more calories. I even made brown gravy, which my dad would be very proud. It wasn't terrible. It's not, I haven't tried it yet. Mm -mm. We met some amazing people here in Alabama. Let me try this. Cassie and Ed, Joey and Mary, and Norma and Wayne. All amazing people. So we already showed you the awesome sign that Norma and Wayne made us, but Ed and Kathy came to the restaurant the other night and brought us some stuff from their print shop. They had an untethered puzzle made, which is really cool. I'm excited. A mouse pad and a license plate for the truck, as well as a little hitch receiver block off plate that mm -hmm. I haven't put on yet, but I'm gonna do it today before we leave so I can stop driving around with my trailer hitch hanging off the receiver all the time. So. <laughs> We don't expect that kind of stuff. So we, sweet. we do this because we love it, but we really appreciate the gifts. Very nice. Thank you guys so much. Yep. Not only is today St. Patrick's Day, I'm sure we have some Irish sprinkled in there somewhere in our lineage, but the Irish make it so fun to celebrate. Yesterday was a lot of fun to celebrate too. Yesterday was everything you do is right day. been training for this day for my entire life. Everything I do is right today. Go ahead, one of you grab it. Whoever gets it first, you win. <laughs> Let us know. Those are my rules. But um, you basically play that game every day. You, you're right. I don't know how it's different than any other day. But today is St. Patty's Day and Travel Day. And because Angela messed up what day we're leaving, I had already put everything away a few days in advance. So the last couple of days have been getting Practice. stuff back out, putting it away again. But I've got it worked down. I've got to go out and put up one sewer hose, the Starlink and the power cord. So we're not in bad shape, but it looks like I may have to dump the sink tank again because we're having a lot of stuff to clean. Yeah, I don't know who's going to clean this mess up. Well, I'm always right, so it's going to be you. I already took that. And it's not it's not that day. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Gross. Leftover buttermilk. <sighs> Look at my handsome boy in his bow tie. Oh he Joe handsome. <laughs> Come here. She does not like that. I guess since Charlie won't wear the bow tie, I guess I can. What do you think? No? No, I agree. What are you putting on there? Butter. Film that. Quick! Golly. Make it stop! Make it stop! Biscuits are done. <laughs> How else would you know that they're done? What are you putting on there now? I'm trying to make them healthier by putting butter on them. They look good. This is a don't judge me day. It's not a how-to, it's how we did. It's never a how-to. Hey, baby. Oh, aren't Are you, you sweet? Are you a hungry donkey? Aren't you sweet? 
Aren't you the sweetest swing? I don't have any food. I was faking. <laughs> Just a little itchings and a scratchings. It's been a pretty nice campground. The animals, the chickens and the goats and the ducks and the geese and the donkeys. I don't know that this belongs to the campground, but it's right here. I think it's the borders. neighbors to the campground, I'm pretty sure, but it's been awesome. I'm going to miss the geese outside of my office every day looking yeah. out the window. They, they were entertaining. I want to say this campground was about $40 a night. We have more than enough room on our site. It's been really quiet. Pretty easy in and out. Yeah, great dog park. Definitely come back here. So TLT, tires, lights, and tug test. We've got the first bit of it down. Now we're just gonna tug test while Ange watches. And she's gonna give me the wave if something goes wrong. Helps if I put it in drive. Good to go. All right, goodbye Coleman Campground. And since our friends Kevin and Alicia aren't traveling right now, unfortunately, I'm gonna take over his tradition. Sorry, Kevin, I didn't ask first, but I don't think you'll care. Bye-bye Coleman Campground. We kinda got to the bottom of that hill over there and had to turn sharp and it was just a dead pull. But for anybody who's asking me if I still like the gas engine and if it'll pull the hills, we've got it on tape. St. Patrick's Day is celebrated every year on the anniversary of his death. It's a religious holiday that has been celebrated for over a thousand years and it falls during the Christian season of Lent where Irish families would traditionally attend church in the morning, celebrate in the afternoon, and then the Lenten prohibitions against the consumption of meat were waived and people would dance, drink, feast on the traditional meal of Irish bacon and cabbage. Now, I have determined that I will never eat cabbage again after I poison myself <laughs> on an entire... When you eat an entire five-gallon bucket of cabbage, <laughs> it's no wonder In you got sick. <laughs> it's no wonder. Some would say you deserve it. <laughs> but I did get stuff for Rubens for us to enjoy tonight. That I can do. The Irish know how to have fun with their celebrations, but we think that you should be proud of where you come from and your lineage regardless, because that's what brought you into this world. That's what got you here. We're just crossing into Mississippi and we see the welcome sign and I'm like, oh look, we're in Mississippi. And as I look, there's this like GMC Denali that just flies across two lanes, locks the brakes up, pulls over. And I'm like, and did he blow a tire? I'm looking around. Anyway, this dude just jumps out of the passenger side and just starts vomiting all over the side of the road. So I guess uh, I guess somebody took their St. Patrick's Day celebration a little too far last night. That's yeah, some, something tells me is that guy was sliding across two lanes of traffic to get over. He was telling him in the strongest of terms, you're not going to puke in my truck. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Welcome to Mississippi. This looks pretty awesome. We are here in Belden, Mississippi, which is next to Tupelo in Trace State Park. This was a suggestion by some friends. They've stayed here. They have much bigger rigs than us. And they gave us suggestions on the sites. The pricing is pretty steep for what you would expect for a state park. But yeah. we're going to have 
huge sites, waterfront, and just seeing the entrance, it looks beautiful. And we knew that if they were suggesting it, it was going to be phenomenal. And really the purpose for this trip was to come meet up with some friends we met at the Grand Design Rally and hang out and get together and just kind of reconnect after what's it been like six months already since the rally. So we're excited to be here and check out the Tupelo area. This park looks promising so far, so we're just going to find our site and get it set up. Start sending it passengers just slightly. I wanted to bring it all the way back because our hookups are back here. Since our sewer hookup is down here, the slide will be over the top of it and our water too. That doesn't bother me too bad. I'll just hook everything up before we push the slide out and it should be relatively easy, but you couldn't beat the back end. I mean, I know nobody likes back ends, but this worked out perfect. I just drove straight up the hill and all I had to do was hold the wheel straight minus a couple of adjustments. So look at the, the out that you're going to have. That's your drive out. I mean, it's Whoop. literally going to be, it, this is, I'm naming it. This is the best back inside ever <laughs> and check out the view. So thanks to Chris and Jessica for this recommendation because this is awesome. So we're gonna go nose down so I don't have to put out a whole bunch of jack. That's pretty good. We're off side to side just a little bit, but really no problem. This is where I really love the snap pads because used to I would carry on this toad of all these stupid leveling blocks and I'd be trying to figure out how many to put down so I could get the jacks down far enough and yada, yada, yada. No more of that with the snap pads. I definitely recommend these. These are a great accessory and I wish I would have got them day one. Sorry, that's probably really loud. <laughs> and they look a lot nicer too. We keep forgetting that we both have mics on. Yeah, as long as we don't walk in the bathroom with them. Like that would happen ever. Oh, we just break a chalk? No, my handle. It, oh. was, already, it was already hanging been kind of hanging on for dear life for a while. Will you unhook my brake, please? Yep. Once our jacks hit the ground, I'm watching our hitch. I want to see it just slightly slide backwards. That tells me that the truck is out from under it, the pressure, so it won't jerk anything forward. There it goes. There we go. Too much more and it'll probably lift the truck. Now Angie's going to let me know when I'm far enough away from the trailer. And I'll watch it and just make sure there's not too much pressure. Perfect. Perfecto. Now I'm good to auto level. Let it do the work for us. I'm gonna go through while the hitch is running and go ahead and hook up my water and my sewer since the slide out's gonna be covering all that stuff just to make my life a little easier. And we're waiting anyways. We're waiting anyway. We are here and all checked in. This place is pretty awesome. I think I've already said it about three times, Trey State Park. It's pretty great. And we can hear the water swishing against the shore right through our window, yes. which is right up my alley. It's gonna be nice. Yeah, it's gonna be a good trip. We're gonna eat our Rubens for St. Patrick's Day, and then we're headed over to see our friends. And we'll see you guys tomorrow. We have a lot planned for tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Welcome to March 18th, which is Sloppy Joe Day, so rest assured we have some Sloppy Joes. And something that I'm pretty familiar with, Awkward Moments Day. I have probably forgotten more awkward moments than I can remember. Do you have an awkward moment that you would like to share? RV related awkward moment. We were at our spot in Illinois before we were full time, but we were working remote some, still had our Jayco, and we were up against a deadline had to be somewhere whatever our black tank was letting us know it was burping at us a little bit if you remember our sewer hose videos i talked about looking for signs of discoloration and things like that i had ignored that sewer hose and it had been laying on the ground for 
I don't know, three, four summers, and I go out and pull the valve and get ready to walk away, and it ruptured. And it looked something like the Joe Dirt movie seen all over the ground. Yeah, needless to say, that's why I change sewer hoses almost every year on the dot. It's funny that that's your awkward moment because we asked you guys on Facebook and a lot of the stories that we got were also poo related. <laughs> so I'm gonna share. We were hauling our turd tank, AKA yesterday's meals on wheels. Ugh. That's disgusting. <laughs> It proceeded to go down a slight hill, hit a bump, and yesterday's Meals on Wheels came off the bumper and rolled past our truck, racing towards the dump station. <laughs> Thankfully, we were able to race there and get there before the tank did. Now that's funny because that has happened to me because we've always kept one of those at our place in Illinois. And I was dragging it one day with the golf cart over to the dump station. I turn around and look behind me and yeah, we had a trail. Those things don't last forever. <laughs> and the bumper hitch, I know what they're talking about because that's what we have. It's the little circle metal bracket that just lays over the bumper hitch. They really need to make some way to secure those or put safety chains on them or something. <laughs> safety chain. Because I've had them bounce off the golf cart hitting bumps before. Yeah, it's, at least it didn't rupture. For that, we can all be grateful. <laughs> Here's one that's not poo related. Aw. At the time, we had our Class A and we always swore we never wanted our wheels off of the ground. We just could not get level or change a sight. So here we were, standing proud, wheels completely off the ground. Been there. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Yes, we have been there. All right, back to the poo stories. I gotta know I'm not the only one. My most awkward moment was a black tank experience. I have the Valterra shutoff valve added to the outlet of the black and gray tank. While I highly recommend it, I'm not sure what I did, but the valve separated itself from the outlet while dumping the black tank while I was crouched down in front of it. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> Let's just say not a pleasant experience. Ugh. To ensure that this does not happen again, I added a big hose clamp to the fitting to keep it in place. And probably what happened there is those, those spin and swivel so you can get the right angle on it. And I, I bet when he went to take his sewer hose off, it was you know all kind of locked together there and it just popped the whole valve off if I had to guess. They go on to say, right after this incident on moving day, I dropped my fifth wheel on the bed. Oh <gasps> no. No. Yeah, that's not a funny one. That's that's fortunately that's well this is awkward moments. So that it was you know, everybody's watching. Oh, I know. That's always the case. Poor and you guy. Feel, you feel like everyone's looking and pointing. Fortunately all the damage was to the tailgate. Good. Now I do the tug test religiously. Very good, Leo. TLT baby, the last thing you do. Tires, lights, and tug. Things like this are teachable moments and good campfire stories. Now that's true. That's a good way to look at it. So this one is not poo related. Basically, she had one of those little fans around the neck that keep you cool in the hot summer. Yeah. And decided to go inside for her Kindle. As she went inside, she heard a really weird noise. And this was a new Schwintex slide and it was right next to the slide. And so she was kind of panicking but couldn't really find anything that was wrong or maybe the fridge was acting weird. So after a little bit, she proceeds to go back outside and hears it again. By the third time, she's frustrated at her husband, kind of blaming his hearing because he can't hear this noise that she's hearing. Hey, I'll stop you right there. Husband, I feel your pain because I can't hear a thing. <laughs> well, in this case, it was her fan grinding against her shirt as she moved. <laughs> so it was really loud to her. But nobody else could hear it. Nobody else could hear it. <laughs> oh, funny. Egg on my face, apologies to my husband. I think you could take a little lesson from her. <laughs> we also experienced a messy, teachable moment. Teachable moment. While emptying the black tank, 
I also used a flush connection to help clean the tank. Finished up with the tank and closed the valve and went inside to shower. A few minutes later, I hear the water running, opened my shower door, and watched water coming up around the stool. Oh, no. I hollered at my wife to open the black tank and turn off the flush hose, but it was too late. Uh, I heard a snap, and one side of the black tank fell through the underbelly. Oh, man. It had exploded under the pressure. The maintenance men that helped me had had this happened to them before so they made me feel a little bit better about it but still it was embarrassing the terms are cracking me up i think we have all had the poop goop fun oh <laughs> i wouldn't call it fun necessarily but. <laughs> we were at a state park that did not have full hookups we had waited in line at the dump station and pulled up it started to unscrew the cap and all the stuff came out from the black tank, of course, three days worth. Oh. He had to quickly get it under it and shut the valve. Oh. Somehow, some way, the last time we dumped, the valve had been left open. The guy at the dump station next to us just looked around his rig and stared. Now we ask each other two or three times, are the valves closed? And I've heard of like kids playing pranks on that. When you've got that cap on the outside, you know, if, you're, if your valve's exposed on the outside, I've heard of like, kids being kids going around and pulling them so that happens when you take the cap off but don't do that kids if you're watching at home that's a well, don't give them ideas that's a jerk move another poo <laughs> another poop goop <laughs> first time using our new honey wagon got it all set up pulled the valve decided to reposition the wagon i said to him don't do that and guess what? The elbow swiveled, disconnected, and the rest is history. The only good news, there is a silver lining to this story. They are YouTubers also and got it all on film. Oh, no kidding? Yep. That's video gold. Called The Brown Fountain. <laughs> Black gold. <laughs> Texas tea. If you have to go through it, at least have the memory. At least get it on video. <laughs> If you're gonna get the poop, if you're gonna get the poo on me, at least have the video running. Oh, this is bad. We completely shut down all the toll booths at the entry to the Boston Turnpike. We were leaving Maine. I was in the leftmost booth lane, and just before getting in, I saw the sign. If you're taller than this sign, use the right hand lane. So, my 40 foot diesel pusher plus my toad, I had to take a sharp 90 degree turn to get into the right booth and block them all. Oh man. I found out Mainers and Bostoners can be ugly when you shut down interstate access. By the way, we made it through with about a thousandth of an inch clearance. Ooh. And I know like when we were up in the Northeast last year, you get to these big toll stations and I know what he's talking about, but a lot of times you don't see it until you're right up on it. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's an easy mistake. I, I don't even know if you can call it a mistake, but it's an easy mistake to make. Yeah. They it, should be telling you like with signs two miles ahead, like, hey, up here, if you're tall, go ahead and merge. These aren't awkward, but we did have a couple more viewers that stopped by the corner of Winslow, Arizona and saw our sticker. So we appreciate that. And then Chloe found the Wienermobile with her wiener dogs, with her untethered shirt. Now, if that's not a trifecta, I don't know what is. That's a win. Here's one that's not gross, but it may make you mad. We work camped. We had a customer come up to the office to say someone stole a sewer hose while he was gone for his day out of his class C, which is odd. He had just bought it, he was devastated, didn't know what to do. Turns out, Next door neighbor saw it and said this. Why would I get my stuff out when his was already out? Oh, you're kidding me. Just as a gut core issue. I hate thieves. But don't borrow something without asking. And how gross to go borrow somebody else's poop hose. <laughs> my, my not nice would come out on that. I would think that I would have misplaced it because there's no way somebody would have stolen that. <laughs> Keep it, man. You can have it, man. It's all <laughs> yours now. <laughs> There you go, Ange. There's your pink super duty. <laughs> now you know it exists, so I have a bad feeling about truck shopping. No, that's like a Pepto pink. I would prefer a dark purple with black sparkle flex. Write that down. I'm not going to write that down. <laughs>
thank you to everyone that participated and chimed in. We're going to give you all a classic awkward turtle. Obviously, there's the leaving of the bag of trash on the truck. That gets a little uncomfortable when you're on the interstate and you see that people are like trying to dodge your vehicle. We've done that a few times. <laughs> One moment that I can think of was in Rockport, Texas. So I was meeting our neighbor, nice guy. But I, I see that he just, he can't stop looking at my leg. And I'm like, okay, this is getting kind of creepy. So I'm trying to close the conversation down. And finally he said, ma'am, there's something on your leg. <laughs> and it was when we were doing the train horns and I was crawling around underneath the truck and I had a big swath of grease and a whole bunch of concrete pebbles on my legs. I mean, it was bad. My whole leg was covered in white and black. And as if to make it make sense, I said, oh yeah, I was crawling around under the truck. <laughs> as if that makes it better. <laughs> I would have thought the one you would have used would have been our New Mexico disaster when we went to the outdoor hot tubs. Oh, <laughs> see what I say? I can't even remember them all. Yeah, when I thought that I forgot my bathing suit bottoms, <laughs> so I improvised. <laughs> and it, to find out that my bathing suit bottoms were- In the truck. In the truck. All along. The whole time. by Tupelo, Mississippi. Well, we need to go see some Elvis stuff. Yeah. This is the birthplace of Elvis Presley. And while they do have a museum that you can go walk through, the house, things like that, we're gonna pass on that one. But there is a place where we wanna visit and we hope that you guys enjoy it. So the story is Elvis's mom brought him here to Tupelo Hardware to look at a gun, a rifle. And while he was here, they also had guitars and she coaxed him away from the gun and towards the guitar and the rest is history. And the place still stands today and it's open for 20 more minutes. So we better get in there. Bought it for $7.50 plus 2% sales tax. Yeah. And now you can get two Red Bulls at Circle K for the same price. Inflation. <laughs> I don't think this is what it's made for. I don't think this is what it's made for either. <laughs> we have been told that if you go into the hardware store and ask them questions and talk to them, they will talk to you about the history, but they were counting their money and trying to cash out and balance their register. So we really didn't want to bother them, but we did come over to Fair Park. There are sprinkles of Elvis all throughout the town. So we came over to check it out. A lot of great artists really point to him as somebody that was their idol, somebody that they wanted to be like. And so it is really cool to see him, but we did hit Memphis last year and do Graceland. If you guys want to check that video out. And we showed you guys Fort Chaffee in Fort Smith, Arkansas, where Elvis did his first military service, which was pretty awesome. So we're going to check this out, take you guys around. I already see they have the coolest adult swings ever over here. So <laughs> maybe don't... we'll try those too. You never know what we're going to end up doing. These things are cold though. And uh, my hindquarters are frozen at this point. His hindquarters. I think, what's this, drums? You know, I have to mention that's for children and you've got this history of playing with children's toys on the playgrounds. Thank you, thank you very much. Welcome to the first day of spring. It is the coldest day of the week and Cody decided to walk out here without a jacket. Well, it was 28 this morning here in Tupelo, Mississippi and it's 48 now, so what the heck. 
As we're sitting here on the first day of spring, the wheels are already kind of starting to turn in my mind for things that we need to do for spring maintenance and spring cleaning. So if there's anything that we can help you guys out with, let us know in the comments. Maybe it's something we can help with. Maybe it's something we'll just go ahead and shoot a video on if we haven't already. As long as we're comfortable with it, we think it can help you guys out, we'd be glad to do it. Or maybe we learn. Or maybe we learn something. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're gonna end this day in the best way because not only is it the first day of spring, it's also chocolate caramel day. Nice. We'll see you guys next time. See you next time, guys. Oh. Is that bad luck? I don't think it's bad luck to wear a bow tie upset. Ow! <laughs> this is my eye. You see is the it stuff choking? I deal with? No. Oh, look how handsome. I think I'll just stick with my Patty's Pub shirt for Valentine. <laughs> what? day is this again? <laughs> Where that's, am I? What am I doing? That's a blooper. I'm glad we bought this for the dog to wear for 20 seconds and for me to wear for 10. But hey, good use of our funds. Let me smell my shoe. Is it stinky? No. Oh. And as you oh. get ready to leave on travel day, this way, this remember, way, this way. TLT, the last. We're going to end. We're going to end this day. I run an impact gun in the background. <laughs>